Let's talk about it. If this is your first time tuning in here on this channel, we talk about film, fashion, and photography, all three things that I love. My name is David Wilson II, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the cinematography from my last video. Now, my last video, if you have not seen it, I went ahead and shared my thoughts on the Canon RF 50 millimeter F1.2. I think I had that lens for about three weeks at that time, but I created this scene so that way my video and filmmaking people can get an idea of what that lens was capable of. Uh, in video and uh, I that was more of a it was just more of a, a photo review but uh, I got a lot of questions on how I was able to accomplish that look and it's very simple I think sometimes us as filmmakers and photographers we tend to overcomplicate lighting sometimes because we see so many productions and all this extra stuff and we just tend to overcomplicate it so today I just want to do a simple lighting uh, cinematography breakdown as to how I was able to get that look so let's talk about it all right so jumping in, uh, the first thing I always look for is trying to salt and pepper my image. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I mean by salt and pepper in my image. I'm going to just go ahead and just start, you know, writing in some stuff as the lighting changes from outside and changes my white balance, but it's all good. Uh, but as you can see, I'm beginning to, you know, highlight the shadowy parts, um, the shadowy parts, the shadow parts. There's no hair light here either. All right. Uh, in this image. Now, even this, this is a C stand as well. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but it is. And then this wall, um, I don't know if you caught on now, but uh, basically I try to add as much of a balance of highlights and shadows as I can, because ultimately, I mean, we hear the buzzword cin cinematic all the time. And um, I think it's sometimes overused on YouTube, but uh cinematic is more so related to the lighting the the composition where you what lens you choose what uh where, where you place your camera right that makes something cinematic and a lot of cases uh, i would probably say 70 percent of the time it has something to do with the lighting and as you can see we have a good balance of both contrast elements uh or co contrasting elements shadows and highlights uh, all working together to create this so uh, I think there's another aspect of this before I want to talk about the framing before I jump into the lighting part of it. It's something that we also as filmmakers and photographers need to pay attention to if we have time. I know a lot of times we're running around probably solo dolo trying to figure it out, but it's important that we include these basic elements, right? So I, I, I made sure that I sat down, hit record, sat down, and then I came back and I reviewed it. Sometimes we don't have that kind of time, but I got an opportunity i noticed that obviously this is in the foreground we got our wall here this is in the foreground but i i just didn't think that was enough foreground elements to be to give us perspective and i'm always trying to give perspective of where the subject is and for me i added this c stand because it was just another layer uh right we got the foreground subject in the background this is a one layer to help tell the story and just kind of point and frame up our subject right and then our next is myself draw a little uh, chalk mark around me there we go and this is layer two and then everything else is just uh you know the background and that's layer three so all of those things plus salt and pepper in your image is working together right to create this cinematic you know lighting scenario or image right it didn't take me very long now you, it might surprise some people what else i use as the lighting but i pretty much just use the sunlight y'all i what I did was I turned on my camera and I knew I wanted to shoot this direction. I knew that this was gonna be the area in which I shot and outside was just blown out when I turned on my camera. But I brought down the NDs, I think I, I'm using a C70. So I brought in six NDs uh, for my camera and then I brought down the exposure for outside. It is extremely difficult, right? And oftentimes it's not possible to balance for what's going on outside and then to balance what's going on inside. So what I did was, um, uh, I went ahead and brought down, like I said, the ND filters. I kept my ISO the same. My native ISO for my C70 is, I believe, 800. So I kept that the same. And then from there, that obviously brought down the level indoors. So outside is balanced at the very least because I didn't want my the trees blown out. And then from there, what I did was um, I just pretty much uh, got it to an exposure that I liked. And I'll highlight, obviously, we got the ambient light uh, or the natural light coming in. Right, and that's lighting our entire scene the way that it is. There is no additional lights. Uh, and then from there, all I did, let me actually erase a couple of these. Uh, from there, 
I went ahead and added a tube light on another C stand. So over here, off screen, uh, we need one more lick. There we go. Is a tube light. Okay. Don't laugh at my tube light, y'all. Uh, and I believe the uh, the natural light that was coming in, or the white balance for this for that I set for my camera was 6500. So that was coming from outside. And then what I decided to do was just set up another tube light at like 10%. I'm pretty positive it was 10% at the same white balance. So that was also uh, 6,500 Kelvin. But I uh, focused the lighting this way on my shirt to give me some level on my shirt. And that's why you see the lighting, right? That light is not bouncing from the wall. Um, that is coming from a tube light, right? All of that light is coming this direction and it's hitting my back and it's also providing some level on the back of my neck as well. But that was pretty much it. It was very simple. Um, I didn't wanna you know, overshoot. I, I love a dark moody scene that kind of conveys that the character is going through something or, and that's really what I was trying to go for, that the character is going through something, has come to a revelation uh, and that's what I was trying to achieve. The one thing I ended up shooting this on another day and it was super windy and the trees were in the background were moving back and forth that would have been i didn't end up recording but i'm not going to show it i probably will show it in this video but it was just so much better of a shot uh, because it just provided a little bit more movement the, the subject is still and then you know the background was moving it was just pretty cool so i wish it was windy on the day that i shot this but um that's pretty much it uh nothing over you know complicated very simple you know uh, let's 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 just stick to the basics sometimes because that's really where we have the most fun when any time that it starts to get overly complicated is when you kind of start to a little bit lose a little bit of the fun side of it um especially when you're doing this by yourself so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video that does it for me uh, i appreciate you guys watching um let me know what you thought i want to know what you thought let me know if you learned something uh, and if you like this kind of content uh as always here on this channel we talk about film fashion and photography uh, I do have some more content coming out uh, in this, this coming week. I promise I'm coming out with some more content. Uh, anyways, that does it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, start your day with giving because way too many people take. Sum up.